Hello, and welcome to Storytime with Jen. Today, we're going to be reading The Shoemaker and the Elves from the fairy tales of the Brother Grimm. Although brief, this tale is the most popular of the Grimm stories about Witchel Manor, gnome-like creatures commonly called elves in English. The story hinges on surprising circumstances that a shoemaker and his wife cannot understand. Each morning, they awake to find beautiful shoes made of leather they left out the night before. Although the mischievous elves don't reveal themselves until the end, their anonymous actions reflect their puckish identity, which has delighted listeners and readers since the little creatures emerged in medieval European folklore. This story of a hardworking shoemaker currying favor with two elves is the quintessential portrait of a folklore world where humans and otherworldly creatures intermingle along the fissures of unexplained events. Other magical characters who exist on this plane are dwarfs, goblins, trolls, and fairies. In contrast to tales that occur in hypothetical kingdoms and forests, this one takes place in a humble workshop, a down-to-earth setting where not a prince, princess, or witch is to be found, suggesting that no matter what one's status in life, elevation of one's circumstances is always possible. Though it originally bore the simple title, The Elves, the tale is popular popularly known today as the shoemaker in the owls. Once upon a time, there was a shoemaker who one day, through no fault of his own, found himself so poor that all he had left in the world was enough leather for one last pair of shoes. That evening, he cut the leather to size since he wanted to take up work on the shoes the next morning. Then, with good conscience, he got into bed, prayed for the dear Lord's grace, and fell asleep. In the morning, he said his prayers and was about to sit down to work when he saw the shoes lying finished on his workbench. He was amazed and did not know what to say. He picked up the shoes to take a closer work. So finely were they crafted without a single stitch out of place and they looked just like a masterpiece. A moment later, a customer walked in who loved the shoes so much that he paid more than the usual price for them. With this money, the shoemaker was able to buy enough leather for two pairs of shoes. He cut the patterns for them that evening and planned to get to work on them in the morning. But there was no need, for when he got up, the shoes were already finished. Soon customers came and paid him so much money that he could now buy enough leather for four pairs of shoes. First thing the next morning, he found those four pairs finished. And so this went on. Whatever he sized up in the evening was finished by morning. Soon enough, he was making a good living again and in time became a prosperous man. One such evening, not long before Christmas, when he finished cutting the leather just before bed, he said to his wife, well, how about we stay up tonight to see who on earth has been lending us such a helping hand? His wife liked the idea and lit a lamp. Then they hid in the corner behind the clothes hanging there and kept watch. At the stroke of midnight, two little bear men came down and sat down at the shoemaker's bench. They took the cut leather and began to work. Their tiny fingers were so deft and fast at punching the holes, stitching and hammering, that the astonished shoemaker could not take his eyes off them. They did not let up until everything was done and the shoes lay finished on the workbench. Then they hurried off. The next morning, the shoemaker's wife said, These little elves have made us rich and we should show our gratitude. They're running around here with nothing to wear and must be freezing cold. You know what? I'll knit some little shirts, coats, vests, and pants for them, and for each a pair of stockings, too. Why don't you make them some tiny shoes? Well, that's a great idea, her husband said, and in the evening, when they'd finished everything, instead of the next day's leather, they laid their gifts out on the workbench. Then they hid once again, hoping to see what the little elves would do. At midnight, they came bounding in, ready to get down to work, but instead of leather for their shoemaking, they found darling little clothes laid out for them. At first they were puzzled, but then they jumped for joy. As fast as they could, they got dressed and straightened their new garments out with their hands, singing, Aren't we fellows neat and smooth? Let's quit the shoemaking and make a new move. And then they hopped and danced around the room, leaping over the chairs and the bench until at last they danced their way merrily out the door. From then on, they never returned, but the shoemaker continued to prosper, succeeding at everything he put his hands to. The End that's it for today's episode of Storytime with Jen. We will see you tomorrow.